Think Formula One in the 1990s and the legendary teams will spring to mind. McLaren, Williams, Benetton and Ferrari fighting it out at the front with Ayrton Senna, Nigel Mansell, Michael Schumacher, Mika Hakkinen, and Jack Villeneuve and all the rest. But it was also a fascinating time at the back of the grid with a seemingly endless stream of minnows and chances trying their luck. While a few teams did come into F1 and thrive, Jordan in 1991 being the most famous example, most failed. In doing so, some produced horrendously uncompetitive cars that rarely qualified for races, let alone getting to the chequered flag. We've picked out the 10 worst backmarker teams of F1 in the 1990s, ranking them based on success, or rather lack of it, and explaining what it was that made them stand out from the crowd in an era where most teams ultimately ended in failure, one way or the other. 10. Modena Lamborghini the pseudo-works Lamborghini team was headed up by legendary former Ferrari engineer Mauro Forbieri and came into existence in 1991 almost by accident. So it was no surprise that in 16 attempts it managed a grand total of 6 starts and no points. Lamborghini was originally due to supply a car and engine to the Mexican-owned Glass team that intended to join the grid in 91. But when the funding for that dried up, the project lived on under the Modena name, chosen simply because it was based in the Italian city of Modena. Although it wasn't called Lamborghini or officially a works Lamborghini team, it ran a car called the Lambo 291 that was powered by a Lamborghini engine and was largely paid for by a stipend from Lamborghini. Nicola Larini produced its best result first time out with 7th in Phoenix, although teammate Eric van der Poel was in 5th place at the start of the last lap in the San Marino Grand Prix, only to run out of fuel. In the end, the withdrawal of Lamborghini support at the end of the year forced the team to close. 9. Simtech Simtech was dealt a tragic hammer blow in only its third race when Roland Ratzenberger was killed in a qualifying crash at Imola. But the team battled on for the rest of the season with an attractive car that, while uncompetitive, was at least stronger than that of fellow newcomer Pacific and a revolving cast of drivers as teammate to David Brabham. Simtech continued in 1995 with a tidy car that used Benetton gearbox technology and showed an encouraging turn of pace, particularly in Argentina where Jos Verstappen qualified 14th and ran as high as 6th. But the money ran out, and Simtech inevitably fell into administration, closing its doors after just five races in 1995. 8. 40 Corsa Race-winning Formula 3000 team 40 Corsa stepped up to Formula 1 in 1995 with big backing from driver Pedro Diniz and grand ambitions, but it struggled to make an impact. That's despite having Roberto Moreno, a specialist in extracting performance from terrible F1 cars who will become a recurring name during this video, in its second car. The Italian team did manage a best finish of 7th for Diniz in the final race of the season in Australia, but the car was well off the pace. Those difficulties led to Diniz moving to Ligier the following season, leaving 40 struggling financially and eventually to its shutting down in the middle of 1996. That was after an ownership dispute between founder Guido Forti and new partner Shannon Racing. 7. Eurobrun Eurobrun, as the portmanteau name indicates, was a joint effort between the Euro racing squad that previously ran the factory Alfa Romeo team and Swiss sports car driver and coin-operated machine magnate Volta Brun. But it was unconvincing from the start, with money always tight and getting tighter, driver ructions and a struggle for competitiveness. In the second half of its first season in 1988, qualifying was a rare achievement. Then, in 1989, neither of its cars ever qualified. However, Eurobrun qualifies for our ranking by surviving into 1990, with the two occasions it made it onto the grid solely down to the heroics of Roberto Moreno. In the sister car, poor old Claudio Langes racked up 14 failures to pre-qualify, making him the driver with the most attempts in F1 that never started a race. Eurobrun's commitment was unconvincing from the start, making you wonder why it ever existed at all. 6. Asala and Fon Metal Osella is perhaps best described as a proto Minardi, a tiny Italian team that soldiered on valiantly with only vanishingly rare points finishes to sustain it. Such was its longevity that even though we are looking at the 1990s form of this team, it had already spent a decade in Formula 1 by that point, with a grand total of one points finish. 
but in 1990, a seller's one-car effort did at least make the grid semi-regularly, with Olivier Cruyard starting nine races with the best finish of 13th. He did also produce a seller's best ever qualifying performance, with 8th at Phoenix. Founder Enzo Asala sold a stake in the team to Gabrielli Rumi in 1990. As a result, Rumi took control for 1991, renaming the team Von Metal after his wheel company. Von Metal continued in much the same vein for the next two seasons, shutting its doors with three races of 1992 remaining. We've reached the halfway point in our ranking, so the most remarkable tales of struggle and disaster are still to come. But before we get into our top 5 worst backmarkers, we just wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're enjoying it, make sure you hit the like button, and if you haven't yet joined the three quarters of a million who have already done so, also subscribe so you don't miss anything from the race. This is what makes it possible to produce these videos, and we've got plenty more planned. Simply clicking on like and subscribing really does make a huge difference. Five Pacific. On paper, Pacific had a lot going for it, given its good record in junior single-seaters that included winning British F3 with JJ Leto and F3000 with Christian Fittipaldi. But it was never on strong financial footing in F1 and lasted just two seasons. Pacific's first season in 1994 was terrible, with comfortably the slowest car and serial failures to qualify. This was despite running a car that shared plenty of design DNA with the Benetton B194 Michael Schumacher took to the title, given both were, at heart, the abandoned Reynard F1 design, albeit one vastly more developed than the other. Things looked up in 1995 with the attractive Pacific PR02, but finishes were rare, the best being Andrea Montemini's 8th at Hockenheim. But despite taking on pay drivers Giovanni Lavaggi and Jean Denis Delatraz later in the year, the team closed its doors at the end of the season, having made a grand total of 22 starts. 4. Andrea Moda Andrea Moda was a farrago from start to finish, with its failed attempt to get away with running ex colonia machinery at the start of the 1992 season, leading to it having to hastily engage Simtech to produce a car that desperately struggled to qualify. Often, both rivals and the powers that be felt that Andrea Moda wasn't even really trying, with poor old Perry McCarthy barely allowed to complete a lap in the second car and coming close to having an enormous crash at Eau Rouge thanks to a steering problem. Almost inevitably, the team was forced out of F1 after the Belgian Grand Prix, amid concerns about owner Andrea Sassetti's activities. Just to add a comedy coda to the whole thing, Sassetti continued to try and get back on the grid and even lodged an entry for 1993, which was rejected. But Andrea Moda's story is elevated by Roberto Moreno, yes, him again, producing the team's day of days when he somehow hauled the Judd engine car onto the grid in Monaco. His engine let go and forced him out after 11 laps. 3. Coloni Arguably the pluckiest of F1's minnows, the tiny Italian team first appeared in 1987, but while it did occasionally qualify in those first three years, several times courtesy of, you've guessed it, Roberto Moreno, it failed to start a single race in the 1990s, with 32 failures either to qualify or pre-qualify. Remarkably, it was even briefly a works team in 1990, with a Carlo Kitty designed flat 12 Subaru engine and a Japanese manufacturer buying into the team, a project that was abandoned during the season as the team limped on towards its inevitable demise at the end of 1991. But given the team's minuscule resources, the fact it lasted six seasons was a triumph for determination over logic. 2. Life the infamous Life Project had everything – consistent failure to pre-qualify, the struggle to complete even one lap, terrible pace when it did so, and a bizarre W12 engine configuration. It lasted a grand total of 14 races in 1990, with the experienced Bruno Giacomelli actually paid to wage war with futility in an attempt to qualify it for a dozen of those races. Ernesto Vita's team was never intended to exist at all, its creation was forced by necessity when Vita couldn't convince any established teams to take its unique engine, penned by ex-Ferrari man Franco Rocci. The team was formed utilising machinery originally designed for the abortive first racing team, and even a switch to off-the-shelf Judd engines late in the season couldn't get it near pre-qualifying, rarely managing to complete a lap without problems, hence some of the extraordinary lap time deficits. 
but unlike the top team in this ranking, it did at least turn up on a regular basis throughout most of its one season in F1, vanishing before the end of season flyaways in Japan and Australia. 1. Lola the catastrophic Mastercard-backed Lola project of 1997 participated in just one race weekend and failed to qualify with both Vincenzo Sospiri and Ricardo Rosset in Melbourne. Sospiri was 11.6 seconds off Jack Villeneuve's pole position time, with Rosset in the second car 12.7 seconds down and stuck in fourth gear. The project had genuine promise, but the car was rushed and therefore desperately undercooked, the finances unsound, and the project was pushed through too quickly thanks to the need to run in 1997 to satisfy sponsor Mastercard or risk losing the backing. That added up to a remarkable combination of lack of pace and a blink and you'll miss it existence that can't be beaten. The team did at least turn up to the second race in Brazil, but by then the cash had run out and the whole Lola car company was in trouble before being sold by Eric Broadley to Martin Bahrain. <laughs>